Hi guys, Dr. Tracy here, and this week you are working on uh, checking out some of those projects that other people were doing and rating those, um, 10 of them. And I know that's going to take most of the week, but I also put on here, we're going to be doing some projects that use the C language. Now, this is not a class in C, and the code you need will be provided. So basically, it's just, you know, type the letters as they say and make it work. But this is a good time to at least get familiar with C. And so I provided you some resources, intro to C, and you don't even have to submit anything. There's nothing due, but this is a good chance to just kind of get to know the language itself. If you've had any experience with other, um, with Java or C++, it's gonna look very familiar to you. I'm just going to walk you through this one down here, learnc.org, and get started on that one. The reason why I'm using this one is because it's interactive and it's online. The basics just go to Hello World. And as you scroll down, you'll see on here it gives a description of the C programming language as a general purpose programming language, which relates closely to the way machines work. And understanding how computers work is the focus of this class. <laughs> but also, it is an important aspect of programming, and so that's why it's part of computer science. Um, C is considered hard to learn, but really it is, it is and it isn't. It is a common language. It is like Windows is written in C. Python interpreter is written in C. We wouldn't have Python if we didn't have C. C++ is derived from C, and C++ is the main language of all game, most games and programs, like 80% of the market. So C is at least something to know, because once you understand how C works, then it'll give you a better idea of how data works and how information travels and how the computer works entirely. So um, in the first program here, it starts off and it uses a library. Every C program uses libraries, which gives the ability to execute necessary functions. For example, in here, we want to be able to use printf which lets you print to the, to the screen and add formatting. That's why print F. This is defined in the standard input output header file, stdio.h. So the first line of C has the include statement that includes the header file that will point us to the direction of where the function is. The second part of the code will always reside within a main function. So we say int main and open and close curly braces. The int keyword there indicate, indicates that it will return an integer. And this just means that when the program is complete, it will return a zero to indicate a successful completion. And so that's why we use return zero and int. So in this exercise, the first exercise, it shows the code and it says change the program at the bottom so that it prints to the output, hello world. It says include stdio.h, which is the standard input output header file. Then it starts a main function, which it ends on line six. It has the return zero, which it'll get to when it executes successfully. But then it says print f and in the side there is a literal string that says goodbye world. Well, since this says it wants you to say hello world, you simply change that and click on run. When it compiles that program and executes, it tells you correct. Okay, move on to the next chapter. And your output is correct, and it will move you on to the next thing to look at, which is variables and types. In this section, variables and types talks about data types and the few basic data types and what exists within the C programming language. We're gonna get into that a little bit more once we start working with C next week, but here's a good place to get some familiarity with integers and the difference between signed and unsigned and float and double and the structures that, that we'll talk about in a later section too. So again, it has a simple exercise for you to practice the pieces that were in C, and then once you've practiced that, you run it to see if you have the optimal solution. If you get stuck, you just click on solution and it gives it to you. Now, 
I'm not expecting you to become masters of the C language in this short period of time, but I would like you to spend at least an hour going through these resources I've provided. Watch the YouTube video. This is also a good tutorial on Tutorials Point. And then I have two links here for an online IDE, CodeChef and Replit. I prefer Replit, so I'm going to show that. There's also other ones out here that I didn't list, and I don't care what IDE you use. But when you create a program in an online IDE, such as this one that says Hello World um, on Replit using Languages C, I'm able to save it. And then once I save it, I can just share it by sharing the link to that program. Later on, when you do projects, I'd rather you submit your assignments by giving me a link instead of having me run an executable program that I have to download first because I can just click here, click run, done, nothing's on my computer. So get familiar with the online IDE as well, such as Replit, because this works just as easy and you can check your program to make sure that it's working in the console built right in on the screen. It compiles, runs, saves, and shares. So good luck with that. Take a look at C language, find yourself an IDE, and get set up for it. Hope this was helpful. I will talk to you soon.